it's Monday, August 8th, 22. And we begin a new week. Yesterday we studied good fruit. We're going to take that theme forward all of this week as we look to how to flourish in harsh environments. That is the miracle of being in right relationship with God. That we can bear fruit, that our lives can produce the things that God is seeking in us in this broken world. This, <laughs> by definition, harsh environment. The beauty of God's word is that it is simple enough for a child to understand. In Romans 1, Paul says that we are without excuse because all of creation testifies to God's greatness. And that's truly what we're looking at as we explore this idea of producing good fruit is illustration after illustration is around us every day. We touched on John 15 on Sunday when Jesus says, I am the vine and you are the branches. And if you remain in Jesus, you will produce much fruit, you will be sustained. Now that's a beautiful illustration of what it is to be a follower of Christ and the need to stay tied in to Jesus. We all understand that. We understand if we went outside right now and we cut a branch off of a tree, which I don't recommend doing, that you would return a few days later and it would be withered and dried and good for nothing but firewood, kindling. All of creation testifies to the importance of remaining in contact with God. And this is not a theme that is just introduced in the Gospels, this is a, a concept that is introduced throughout God's Word. If we are to prosper, if we are to produce, then we need to remain in God. Without remaining in God, we produce no fruit and we will not see eternity. So the focus much of this week is not going to be on our neighbors, which is important. We spoke at the end of the message yesterday on how we are called to be the gardeners to, to help promote new growth and fruit. We are not the one who is cutting down and getting rid of. We are the ones who are desperately interceding for all those that God has called us to tend to. We're going to turn the focus on ourselves this week and hopefully come to a a recognition of how important it is to allow God to cut out the things that detract or need to be pruned so that we can be more fruitful. It is true, we are living in a very harsh environment and the world would say, why would you expect fruit from anyone? We have an excuse. 
because of this broken place, we should be allowed to be like everyone else. They're not bearing fruit. That's the trap that lures us away from seeking God and taking hold of what he is, is offering. The life-giving vine for us, the branches. We're going to start this week in the very beginning of Psalms. As this idea of the vine and the branches is illustrated by this water flowing through a parched valley and all of the, the growth that occurs around that riverbank. Oh, the joys of those who do not follow the advice of the wicked or stand around with sinners or join with mockers. But they delight in the law of the Lord, meditating on it day and night. They are like trees planted along the riverbank, bearing fruit each season. Their leaves never wither, and they prosper in all that they do. All of creation testifies we are without excuse. It is plain to see. If you want to prosper, you need to tap into the life-giving water. You need to remain in the vine. You need to, to separate yourself from the world and tie yourself into God. Now, when we say separate from the world, that certainly doesn't mean that we go off to a mountain retreat and we wait for the end to come. Separate from the worldly ways. In Psalm 1, it's stay away from those who are actively sinning and those who are, are mocking, especially God. We know how easy it is to give in to the attitudes around us. And God is saying there's a better use of your time. Instead of indulging in the things of the world, spend time with me and you will grow and prosper. We see this theme continued in Philippians in the very first chapter as well. Paul has planted all of these works. It's not a mystery why we call it church planting. Paul goes on three separate missionary journeys and his job is to plant and help nurture early churches so that they might grow into full-fledged representations of God. They might be fruitful. One such church is the church of Philippi. And the letter that we have on record of him writing to the church of Philippi, Philippians, starts out, I pray that your love will overflow more and more and that you will keep on growing in knowledge and understanding. For I want you to understand what really matters so that you may live pure and blameless lives until the day of Christ's return. So we have a passage from the very first chapter of Psalms, Psalm 1. We have a, a great distance in time 
from the, the time of that was written to the time that Philippians is written. Very similar theme. That I want you to know what matters. I want you to remain tied into God. For you will prosper. Now also part of this theme is our responsibility to continue that flow, that love of God. We have a mission to complete. Our salvation is not only for ourselves, it's for all those that we come in contact with. We can see the, the river winding as Paul goes on his missionary journey and plants churches. Our lives need to be similar. Wherever we go, we take the love of God with us. What might first start out as a small stream building into a brook, building into something even larger, carrying with it hope for a better day. As new growth springs up along its shores. With that visual in mind, we now understand the mission of the church. We now understand our purpose. It isn't hidden. It's for all to see. If trees are to bear fruit in a harsh environment, they must have water to sustain them. God's love carried by the church into the parched land is the source. May you always be filled with the fruit of your salvation, the righteous character produced in your life by Christ, by Jesus Christ. For this will bring much glory and praise to God. We spoke, Jesus referenced that it's easy to distinguish who is tracking, who is, is filled with life, and who isn't. As we spend more and more time with Jesus, his character becomes our character. And the transformation is evident. We will not have to question whether we are truly tied in, nor will anyone else. We will know. And we will bring water to a much needed land. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord. We praise you, Lord, for not hiding. Whether we look to the Old Testament and the Psalms, or we look to the New Testament and the writings of Paul or the Gospels, we find you. And the theme is consistent throughout in this theme of looking to creation for an understanding of what it is you desire from us. Where you are pulling us towards and what it means to be fruitful. Forgive us, Lord, for turning a blind eye to what's clearly accessible.
To break free from this world, we must tie into you and choose to spend time in you versus in the world. Build a new discipline in us today, Lord. You are not done growing your church, growing a network of life bringing rivers and streams to this parched world. Help us to prosper for our own salvation. Help us to prosper for all those who are thirsty and in need of your love. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, good start. Continue to, to seek God's word for your life. Spend time today. I encourage you to continue your three minutes, three times a day. We could expand to five minutes, five times a day. But just find time to invite God in to hear from him today. I love you. I miss you. See you back here tomorrow. Until then, be good. <laughs>